You know, first of all, just congratulate Craig Neal and our basketball team. What a, what a great year, you know, entertaining to watch. And, you know, I was talking to Paul Krebs this morning, you know, when it's over, it's over. You know, what a, you know, what a quick departure that becomes, you know, for, for the teams that, but, um, you know, Cameron Barstow, what a inspirational guy. You know, you talk about someone that reflects, I think, what these programs here at New Mexico are, certainly our program, hopefully, of just developing guys and you know maybe a guy that wasn't that highly recruited I'm not sure his exact story but you know just watching his development in the time since I've been here uh, man that's that's an inspirational guy I mean every week every game he went out there and just played you know and was just so consistent so uh, you know just looking at the basketball thing uh, you know you, you know coaches make a difference you know I, I I was fortunate, you know, a guy named Johnny Miller was my high school basketball coach growing up, and his son Sean and Archie are both in the uh, Sweet 16. And also John Calipari, who went to the same high school I went to, all three of those guys, you know. Uh, but, but John Miller, their, their dad, I was thinking of a story today when I was working out. You know, he, I think it was in 11th grade, my 11th grade year, my senior year, he took another job. Uh, down in Beaver County, about 30 minutes away from where we all grew up, took a new head coaching job, and it was in the summer, and I was playing baseball. You know, we all just played, went from football, basketball to baseball, but it was about 6 o'clock in the morning. He'd stop and pick me up, and I was still playing in high school, and he took the new job, but he'd stop and pick several of us up and take, take us down early in the morning to his new high school to scrimmage and to practice against his guys every morning. And I remember laying in bed, and you know, we had a little one story house, you know, and knocking on my window six o'clock in the morning, you know, and I'm like, oh man, you know, God, I tried to sleep through it, tried to act like I wasn't there. There was none of that. He got me up out of that bed and took me, and you know, we did that a whole summer where he'd pick us up in the morning and take us down at six o'clock in the morning to go, to go play against his new high school. And you know, just coaches make a difference. You know, coaches make a difference. And, you know, to have the opportunity to play for someone like John Miller and you see the success that he's had with Archie, uh, with Sean, and with John Calipari all coming up through the same tree. And then, um, you know, my high school football coach, Rip Shear, And then, you know, to coach in college, you know, to be with really three Hall of Fame coaches, uh, Lou Holtz, uh, Jackie Sherrill, in my opinion, who's never been officially inducted, but he's a he's a Hall of Fame coach, and then R.C. Slocum. Um, you know what? Coaches make a difference, and um, you know we've made a difference here. We've made a difference, and that, now it's time for us to to take the culture that we've developed, um, some of the behaviors that we've started to develop, and you know hopefully get some results. You know that that's obviously the next step, and. And, uh, you know, a lot of times the most difficult stuff. You know, our, our problems aren't solved. We, we know that, um, you know, I think we're still unique in that, um, you know, Brian and I were figuring up today, we have seven, seven fourth or fifth year players in this program, seniors, seven. The guys that have been here four or five years, seven guys in this program have been here four or five years. Uh, you know, then we have another seven seniors that are the guys we brought in. You know, a couple of them will be, you know, two-year guys. Uh, but when you think about fourth and fifth-year seniors in your program, we have seven guys on this team that are fourth and fifth-year seniors. And you look at some of the team, I, I think probably Stanford basketball team had more than that, you know. And they got, what, 12 guys on the roster or something, you know. So the numbers, huh? They have eight. They had eight seniors? Yeah. Fourth, you know, we have seven as a football team. You know, you're looking at fourth or fifth year seniors, you probably should have 25, you know? So we still have challenges to get the, to get the roster back to what it's supposed to really look like, um, you know, but we, we've made some progress. And, and this is the, you know, the next step to just see if, we've, if we can continue building, continue growing as a program as we go into spring. So, uh, you guys have been through this before. You know, it's, it's, it really is the best time of the year uh, to go out there. And, uh, you know, we haven't stopped. You know, it's been, it's been nonstop. And, and um, you know, hopefully we're going to start to see some benefits of that. Uh, practice Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Uh, uh, meet Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. 
so it, it's a full-on deal for these kids, just like it has been. And I, I, I have to compliment the off-season program. Um, you know, Ben Hilgard and just our coaches were heavily involved. Um, it was, it was, it was good. It, it was good. So, with that said, you know, any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Coach, I, I'm just curious about one thing before we get to questions about uh, spring practice. Just because you'd opened about basketball, have you had a chance to talk to, to Craig? I haven't. Department? You know, I haven't. You know, we, we kind of, you know, you kind of get off coaching your deal and you let guys go coach, but I'm certainly going to do that. And I'm going to reach out to Cameron Barristow as well. I mean, that guy, he, he impressed the heck out of me. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I enjoy watching it. I mean, you talk about guys just competing across the board in college athletics, um, you know, I mean, we're all sad when basketball season's over. He huh? He would, he would. And I, and I tell you, I was talking to Paul Krebs and he was just talking about, um, they flew back from, maybe it was Charleston or someplace earlier this year. Did they play in South Carolina early, opened yeah. up? He said he sat next to Cameron Barristow and the whole way back, he said, number one, all he did was drink water the whole time. You know, didn't have a soda or anything like that. But he had a rubber ball. He was just squeezing a rubber ball in his right hand and his left hand the whole way back. You know, just a guy that, you know, after games would go lift. You know, I don't want to say a self-made guy because he's a talented guy. But I, I, think, I think guys like that are what this program here at New Mexico is, across the board, probably in all sports. And, and, and um, I'm certainly going to use that example with our players. Yeah, you know, we'll find out more when the, when the live bullets start. But, um, you know, it's been just a lot more time um, to what I think is normal, just spent with leadership and things, you know, talking about things that you, uh, you know, that a year or so ago or two years ago, we didn't have much time to talk about those things as we just worked through a lot of other things. But as far as the staff, I think um, – uh, you know, I'm interested to watch. You know, I, I think, I think their personality will be put on this defense quickly. Uh, uh, I think the fact that both uh, Barry and Chuck were in such similar schemes for such a long time uh, really helps us. Uh, I think it gives. I think it definitely upgraded our staff. I really do. I think both those guys coming in with their experience and their familiarity with what we do helps us so much. I think there's a, a lot of confidence, a lot of confidence that's been gained. Um, you know, again, we'll, we'll find out, you know, but um, um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm anxious to see those guys just get their personality put on our players now that we get started. Yeah, you know, I think, um, I think it's probably not as dramatic as what some people think, you know, I, probably the last time we met was uh, right after recruiting the day, the day of the signing date. And really, it's been nonstop since the day of the signing date with our team. You know, we've, we've gone five days a week with our team through the off season. So it's not like all of a sudden, well, now we get back together and now all of a sudden we start coaching again. You know, it's more of a seamless transition from the off season now into spring practice. And that, that's the thing that's so exciting. You know, it, it's like you can start a little bit farther down the line at a higher level. You know, but I, I think first of all for us, um, and this sounds so simple, but it's, you know, it's getting from point A to point B faster, uh, with more effort, uh, with more urgency, and just being more comfortable, and more mature. You know, it, it, it really, if, if, we, if we did nothing this spring, but get from point A to point B faster, with more effort and more confidence and more maturity, I consider it a heck of a spring ball. You know, so I, I think I just want to see our guys go out and cut it loose, uh, gain some confidence, confidence, and, and gain some maturity with how we play. Once again, there's no uh, spring game. Will you ever bring that back? I don't know. You know, um, we might do something maybe on a Friday night instead of the, the Saturday, the last day. Um, I, I don't know. You know, it, it just. You know, we have so many guys, um, like everybody, like everybody does now. Um, maybe it affects us still a little bit more. I'm not sure of that. But, you know, they're, they're not really full contact. 
You know, wh we have a list of guys that, um, you know, the I.B. Browns, uh, Patron Hightower is still in that situation where he can do a lot of things, but we're, we're not going to be able to just turn them loose and scrimmage. Uh, th there's several other guys like that. So it's hard, to, it's hard to go out there and have enough guys to just say, okay, let's turn it loose and scrimmage. You know, because you're, 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 there's 22 of your guys going at one time when you scrimmage. It's not like 11 when you play a game. You know, so I'd love to have one. Um, I'm sure our fans would like to have us have one. Uh, we'll see. You know, I'm not ruling it out. We'll, we'll, we'll do something, though. What about the new guys that are already on campus? Stuff like that. I mean, them yeah, I've seen them improve already. You know, we, we were so competitive uh, through the offseason with everything we did. Um, you know, you've seen some of those guys, even though they were junior college players, come in and improve. You know, Eden Mahina is a guy that, uh, uh, you know, his story's probably been talked about, but he was on a, a Mormon mission in Panama for two years and, uh, you know, never lifted, never worked out for two years. Then he came back and played one year of junior college. So Eden Mahina is a guy, for example, was 305 pounds, but he's changed his body already since being here in a short amount of time. Uh, Ryan Lankford, the linebacker out of Iowa, is a guy that uh, has a lot of ability. He can run. He's gotten a little more familiar with what we do already. Um, um, Daniel Henry, uh, he's going to be a guy. He, we won't get much out of him in the spring. He, he had a labrum. We wanted to go ahead and, and get that thing done. So we did it as soon as he got here. So he'll be out there. He's one of those guys that will be able to do some things but not do a lot. Uh, and, and then uh, Bijan Parker is the high school guy that enrolled early. Uh, big, taller corner that really ran better than we thought he would run. You know, we, we timed our guys twice in the 40s, full-on 40s, uh, with six guys timing throughout the highest, the lowest, average the four others to get accurate 40 times. He ran better than we thought he did. So those are the four new guys we have here on campus, plus Nick Lehman, the tight end, who's ready to go. So we have five new guys. Um, anxious to see all of them, you know. How's Cole doing here? What's his status? I'd say Cole is a Cole. Cole, I think, ran four six five, and uh, you know he was right at two hundred and thirty pounds, and uh, you know he ran it without his shirt on. And you saw that big sucker coming down there running that forty. You said I, I wouldn't want to step in front of him. I mean, he is a man. Um, he's been great, you know, been great. Spent a little time in Florida. Uh, continues to, you know, improve as a passer. Uh, but Cole, uh, you know, everybody's pulling for Cole. He, he is a, he's a unique guy. He really is. Coach, are there any uh, walk-ons that you think are great guys that miss great practice that could become scholarship players? Yeah, we got, a few, we got two more we just put on, uh, David Anaya and Reese White. Um, um, you know, Stephen Romero, our long snapper, is right on the verge of, uh, getting a scholarship as soon as, as soon as we have one available. Um, several guys, uh, several guys. A, a young man named Greg Wortman from down the road in Las Lunas is someone, an outside linebacker that has opened eyes. Um, uh, he, he's a guy that uh, a year ago said he was coming, was going to walk on. And I think his dad works for the water company or runs the water company in Las Lunas, his mom's real estate. And he was here every day in spring practice. You know, it was probably a 195-pound tall, lanky guy that's now about 215, opened eyes in the offseason. Uh, so Greg Wortman's definitely a guy that, you know, we're excited about seeing. Uh, Devin Bennett, a young guy from Rio Rancho that's been here, he's going to have his wrist operated on, so he'll miss spring. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of good young, young walk-on guys, yeah. A little Lopez. Uh, from down the road here, east of here, uh, someone we're excited about watching. So, yeah, there's some guys. You know, just what I said. I mean, um, you know, I, I think you hear that word culture so much. Um, you know, I think the leadership has been good. I think the culture has been developed. Uh, I think our guys are behaving the way winners are supposed to behave for the most part and that behavior sometimes precedes winning as you know so now it's time for us to see if we can win and um, uh, that's what it is that, that, that's what it is you know uh, um, it's kind of the next step in this
but no, Casey Carrier, who's, who's uh, graduating. How how big of a hole is that going to leave you? Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a great opportunity for guys. You know, I think uh, uh, Jarrell Presley actually had the fastest forty on our team. The first time they ran was faster than Ridge Jones. Now Ridge Jones came back the second time and beat Jarrell Presley, but I think everybody kind of eyes lit up when you saw Jarrell Presley at 195 pounds run that fast. I mean, he is a talented guy. That when I talk about the maturity piece of it. Uh, he needs to mature, and I don't say anything to you that I haven't already said to him. He, he understands that as well. He's talented. Uh, you saw the run he, he made against Fresno. Uh, uh, Crusoe Gongbe is a physical, physical guy. Uh, you go back and look at the tapes from last year, uh, I'll tell you, he can stick his foot in the ground and go north and south really good. Casey was more of a cutback guy. Uh, so both those guys are older guys. Uh, Drell has two years, Crusoe has one year, but they're both bigger, stronger guys. Uh, Terry on Gibson, even though he's 170 pounds, is pretty powerful. Another guy, Ramel Jordan, um, that we redshirted last year, he has really, really impressed us with his test results and how he's worked in the offseason. So, um, and we have two coming in. But I think it's a great opportunity for some other guys. I, I really do. You know, uh, um, it was unfortunate Casey pulled his hamstring in the pro day because he was he was he was probably going to run in the high four fours, the one he pulled his hamstring on our, our ten yard and twenty yard times before he pulled it. But you know I, I think um, I'm, I'm anxious to see our backs. I think we're I think we're pretty talented there. Which one of the backs had the best cutback at the moment? Uh, you know probably Casey. <laughs> He's gone. But uh, you know, I think Terry on Gibson will be that guy. He's a little he's a little water bug, you know, that can cut back. Would you say Williams is the fastest kid on the team? No, you just missed what I said. Gibson. What did I just say a minute ago? Presley. I said no. Presley was the fastest the first time, and then Ridge Jones blew them blew him away the second time. Yeah, okay. yeah Ridge Jones Ridge Jones would be the fastest player on our team. Uh, Presley's probably second. And then you might be surprised third and fourth. You know, a guy that's come on, Cranston Jones, uh, who's, who's certainly, you know, he's, he's had some hard lessons learned. You know, he's played two years as a young guy, probably played a little before he was ready. But Cranston Jones has really improved. And uh, Saquon Edwards can run. Uh, Ramel Jordan can run. Uh, and then, then it would be the Carlos Wiggins, uh, that group. Yeah, we got more than two guys. Uh, I remember standing here a couple years ago. It was Cole Gauchi, who was left-handed and nobody offered a scholarship to. And it was B.R. Holbrook, who had this remarkable surgery where they took something and graft into his knee. So, yeah, we've, we've, made, <laughs> we've made a little progress there, I think. But, um, um, yeah, I mean, Cole, Cole, is, Cole is a unique guy. I, I tell you, running the triple option and, you know, you spend so much time watching the offseason tapes from last year, which at times was painful. I promise you, it was painful. But Cole is so good with the triple and just the mesh. And, and But, you know, Clayton Mitchum, um, he's got some talent. I mean, Clayton Mitchum, uh, you know, he, he, he does some things that, that shows what kind of athlete he is. And we have the two young guys that, that I'm really anxious to watch, Lamar Jordan and uh, Caleb Kimbrough. Lamar Jordan is, is starting to show what we saw in high school where his 40 time was, was fast and his quickness is there and his aggressiveness is there. Where last year he kind of, we didn't see it much last year as a true freshman, maybe because he was red shirting and he didn't think he was going to play. So we've got those four and then we have, um, you know, Vega's going to miss the spring. Uh, he had a Liz Frank uh, 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 injury, which is pretty sig significant, the last play of the Boise game. If you remember, he was in there against Boise. He was limping around on the last play. Uh, Vega won't do much this spring. Uh, so it's the two young guys, Clayton and Cole, and then we have the two high school kids coming in that we, we really like. Bob, I know you like get to the point where you redshirt most of your incoming freshmen. Uh, you don't come out of the spring knowing, knowing enough about what you've got to, to be confident in doing that? Or you have to yeah, Rick, I think, um, you know, we're still waiting on those guys to get here. I mean, the, the, those, 
we're not in the mode yet of particularly on that defensive line. Uh, you, you know, if we can get uh, Taylor Timmons and Cole Juarez in here, um, uh, Zilts, uh, you know, some of those guys, we're, we're, we're counting on coming in here and, and playing for us. You know, they're, they're bigger, older, more mature guys that we think, we think can come in here and help us right away. Um, you know, and other guys, yeah, I think we will redshirt some guys. That, that's going to help us down the road. It, it really will, what we were able to do last year. Um, uh, you know, a couple of the guys we redshirted are no longer in the program. You know, the Twins and um, Bourne. But um, down the road, that, that, that will definitely help us redshirting those kids. So I'd love to. Uh, it's just um, we really recruited particularly those junior college kids that are end-of-the-year junior college kids. We took them because we felt like they could come in here and add some instant maturity to our team. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, in the uh, Boise game, I thought the defense looked more aggressive than maybe it had earlier in the year. Is, is this spring an opportunity to start to move that forward being more aggressive with the defense and, and try to – how much can you coach that? Oh, we have to coach it. You know, we, we – um, <coughs> I mean, we all know what it is, you know. We, we uh, uh, you know, if you, if you looked at this big picture and said, how many games would you have won in the first two years? I'd say it would probably, coming into it, I'd probably say it was going to be about right. We'd win seven or eight games in our first two years, you know, being honest, coming into this situation. Uh, if, you'd, if you'd have told me that our offense would be as far as ahead of our defense right now as it is, I thought it would have been the opposite. Just coming in with our backgrounds and just, as we build things, it hasn't been that, you know, and, and there's a lot of reasons for that. We have to build a defense. We have to build a defense. And, and I think our fan base, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure they're, I'm going to say I appreciate their patience, but I think our fan base would love to see defense. I, I just think the city of Albuquerque, um, the toughness of this town, you know, the history of this program, we have to play defense here to win. We have to. And that, that, believe me, it, it has been, it's been 100% of our full attention every day is to build this defense into something this city and these people in this state can be proud of. And uh, nobody wants to do it more than our players. And it, it, it's, 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 a, it's a, you know, it's like turning the Queen Mary around. You know, there's no easy way, it's, there's no easy way to do it. And I think as long as we stay on course and stay patient, this is the next step in that. This is the next step. And, um, you know, just getting them from point A to point B more aggressively is the number one issue and the number one thing. And that, that, there's a lot of things involved with that. But that has been every day, every day since we walked off that field at Boise, through recruiting, through offseason, through staff changes, through position changes, everything has been can we get them from point A to point B aggressively and look like what a college defense is supposed to look like. That, that's, that's our number one objective. Is it accurate to say that there's, there's no defensive equivalent to the triple option? The, uh, no defense team. There, there, you, can't, you can't do as much scheme-wise on defense? To yeah, yeah, it. exactly. I mean, that's what it is. You know, as you look at the big picture of this, um, we've been able to compensate for some things on offense schematically we've been able to compensate just our style of play being a little different um, you can compensate because you can call the plays and you can run the ball where you want to run it and you don't have to throw it if you don't want to throw it but on defense and I've talked about this many times you can't camouflage things at some point you're exposed and it's not an x and o issue um, you know it, it's a it's a total turn the Queen Mary around issue and and just keep keep doing what you're doing and it'll come you know it's not as far away as what you think you know all of a sudden you'll look up there and there may be a guy in there like a big Sam Mabani or a Patron Hightower or um, you know a Saquon Edwards who now after second year at corner or Cranston Jones that's played two years now um, uh, you know, a Dakota Cox, all of a sudden maybe a Dom Twitty comes out of nowhere. It's not as far away as what it ended up looking at the end of last season, you know. And, and, and um, so 
Yeah, on offense, you're able to compensate on defense. There's nowhere, there's not many places you can go schematically. That's just the reality. And as you look through all this, you know, whether you say in, in your first knee-jerk reaction to say, man, we need to change that scheme. We, 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 need to, we need to this, we need to that. But as you look at it, I put the Ohio State defense on against Clemson today just to watch. I spent a couple of days up at Ohio State. It doesn't matter what you say you're in. Teams now, with the way they spread the field, you're in, you're in what you're in. They don't really care. You know, it's more personnel and it's more just – one play to the next play to the next play and just being able to tackle, being able to tackle and get guys on the ground. You know, and when you get a chance to make a play, make a play, sack the quarterback, get them third and long. You know, so we just got to keep developing guys. We, we, got, to, we got to develop some Cameron Bearstows, right? We really do. You guys watched him develop. That's what we, we've got to develop those guys. We're all of a sudden, man, where's that guy been? You know, he's here. We, we just got to keep doing what we're doing and develop him.